Welcome back everyone, and today we'll be looking at the final Scimitar-based dev video. Unless something else comes along, of course, at which point I will be jumping on it. So, some of you, I assume, may be wondering, how did she know that the dev system is still being used? Well, it's actually very simple. A while back, I was able to get something from Steam that gave me a lot of pause on how I wanted to do stuff. Let's start from the very beginning. So there I was, minding my own business, when all of a sudden I get a message from a friend and he's like, wham bam something ma'am, here's a thing. So then I said, what's the thing? And he said, download it from Steam. And I was like, okay, but I don't have that game. So they're like, it's on sale, get it. So then I said, okay. So then they said, Okay. And then I said, fine. And then they said, fine then, see if I care. Yeah. And that didn't really happen. He's a great guy, and he gave me some information, so I bought the game, and I spent the next few days figuring out how this system worked. The game I'm talking about is, of course, not exactly what you'd think. It's actually Assassin's Creed Phoenix Rising. Wait, what? Oh, right, right. This is Immortals Phoenix Rising. Phoenix Rising actually started out as an interesting game based off of Assassin's Creed Odyssey, though I suspect it started even earlier with Assassin's Creed Phoenix Rising on PS3 or PS4, and it just never panned out. That's probably the origin of it, back with Rogue. You know, the easter egg that everyone thought was an easter egg, and it actually wasn't. So then, at some point after Odyssey, they could have said, Hey, remember how we were going to do something about phoenixes or something in, in Assassin's Creed, but that never panned out? Yeah, can we make our interpretation of that based off of Odyssey? At which point Ubisoft greenlit it with evidence that it could work, but then they said, let's keep it away from the name it came from, we don't need the fanboys circling around again. So then they called it Gods and Demons, which then eventually leaked on the mobile platform Stadia, as a minimal use demo. Well, before they caught it anyway. It was out for about 20 minutes. Once they caught it, they retracted the download. But then, to distance themselves from that controversy, they renamed the game again to Immortals Phoenix Rising. Now, yes, it is entirely possible that as the development team said, the game came from a software bug that turned characters into giant cyclopses. But I do suspect that it came from Rogue's joke Assassin's Creed sequel title. Now, Curry, what's your evidence for this? You've given some pretty outlandish theories before. Honestly, I don't have any evidence for it. But I do theorize that the development started around mid-2018, when Odyssey entered the bug test phase, and it was just making sure that there wasn't anything game-breaking. Because we all know, all Assassin's Creed games can be a little buggy. I mean, falling through floors, vibrating Desmond, I mean... Okay, fine, but Curry, why are you outlining this stuff for a crap game? Well, firstly, it's not crap. It's actually pretty good. I actually thoroughly enjoyed what I played of Phoenix Rising. Is it funny? Kinda. Is it ha 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 funny? Not really. But I've heard it's accurate according to Greek myth, with exception of the obvious. And since I'm working on my own project of that nature, and the game is based off of the Scimitar, Anvil, Anvil 2.0, Anvil Next, Anvil whatever engine, which I have a fair degree of experience with the menus in, so I figured, why not? Honestly, this game is really fun, even without debug, and I recommend it to people who do just want to have fun. But with that, let's go ahead and begin. When you're watching this footage, I want you to keep one thing in mind. How big are the AC3, AC4, and Rogue dev maps in comparison to these? Now let's go ahead and start with this dev map. This first dev map may look simple and tiny, but it's got one hell of a punch. This dev map has an invisible wall protecting its sanctity from my exploration, but that's never stopped me before. Now 
Up we go! I'm not sure if this map has been somewhat used before, or if it's unused entirely, or if it's just a display room, or whatnot. But there is a huge tower and lava, which leads me to believe that it may have been used in the main game or one of the DLCs at some point. But it's also a display room. Oops, I died it. Well, let's go ahead and load the game back up. I believe that this map is called DLC 1 Showroom. As you can see, this map is getting absolutely massive with constant things to explore and experience. Like getting killed by lava. And murals of Zeus holding a lightning bolt. And getting killed by lava. But how tall is this map? This map is not just large, but this is deceptively large. If we look out into the distance, we can see additional structures. There's an entire world in here. I don't know if the main game is this big or what, but this is gigantic. We're not going to look at everything because this build is actually public. I could make a very long video just exploring this place. Given the massive detail, I do think that this is being used somewhere else, possibly just in DLC 1. The original clip of my exploring this area that this footage is being pulled from is about 15 minutes. But with that, let's go ahead and move on to the next map.
The next map is called DLC 2 Showroom. This shows all of the scenery, buildings, statues, a ton of trees, and general objects from the second DLC. Not everything is here, of course, but a fair chunk of it is. Like usual, I won't be showing everything. I could make several videos just about this and exploring. Here are some of the statues that are in the game. There are also some models, such as the Headless Man. Now where's the horse and the floating guy pursuing him with a prototype sword? This map is actually somewhat of a departure from the previous two. It's called DLC 3 Puzzle Prototype. This map focuses on all of the elements, pitfalls, traps, gadgets, and so on of DLC 3 as a means of testing the environment. Unfortunately, again, like with the other maps, I won't be showing everything. The puzzles range from shooting arrows, to picking things up and putting them into a slot, and shooting objects, to dodging traps. The next map that we're going to be looking at is another showroom. This one is called DLC 3 Showroom. This map is, you guessed it, for showing all sorts of things from DLC 3. First up, we've got a huge temple. But as we can see, we've got some non-physical stairs. But we can use ghost mode to go up the steps. Just like in previous maps, and in Assassin's Creed dev maps, the text tells us exactly what everything is supposed to be.
we can see a large amount of props, buildings, titles, textures, and all sorts of things to see how they'd interact, just like in the Assassin's Creed 4 La Props dev map. Modular elements, I assume, are destructible objects, or pieces that are modular in nature, that being stuff that you could assemble or disassemble. However, just as you saw, not all of it is physical, in all of the levels of display at least. Let's go ahead and move forward to the next dev map. This dev map is actually called a DLC Test Pangu. This is the one that I have the least amount of information on. This map appears to be a proto-map that one of the areas in the game would be based on, but in my brief sweep of the game, I didn't actually see anything like this. The area seems to be somewhat rough altogether, and it seems like it's still very detailed in many places, such as the golems, or the bottom of the map, or all in all, the, like the trees and the assets in general. The next area is called DLC Pangu Dungeon Test. While it can be inferred as to what it's supposed to be, it's definitely one of those areas that we're not totally sure about. The green in the background, as far as I know, is actually for the non-textured entities. This area, I assume, is based off of DLC 2, as it does seem to be the most similar to this type of map. That is, if I'm getting the DLC in the right order. This final map is called DLC CTU Monster. This will be the final area that we investigate for this video and concludes our tour of the Scimitar system. Within reason, at least. This area appears to be either for blowing off steam from the developers by using ghost mode to kill everything, or to test how the enemy AI acts. But it's probably the former. It's actually really cathartic. All in all, this has been an absolutely wild ride, and I plan on additional videos in the future, maybe some on Assassin's Creed. If I do get the opportunity, then I will absolutely jump on them. But for now, I hope you have a wonderful, great day, and stay safe.